Hello everyone, today I wanted to talk about the Bowhead Reach Adaptive Mountain Bike. I purchased one of these bikes in November of 2021, and while there's a lot of social media about this bike, there isn't too much independent review content and details about it, so I wanted to make my own video. Today I'll talk about what it was like to buy it, I'll kind of walk you through what the bike looks like and how it works, and I'll t give you a review of what I see are some of the strengths and weaknesses. Hopefully, if you're considering buying one of these bikes, you'll find it helpful, and maybe it'll help Bowhead in the future push to make this bike even better. First, I'll talk about buying the bike. Start to finish, it took about four weeks. I spent several days emailing back and forth with the support department as we figured out how I wanted the bike configured and what options I wanted. At that point, they were able to price the bike, and I paid for it. It cost $15,000 plus $1,000 for the rotating seat option, plus $1,500 in shipping, and then another 50 or so dollars in transaction fees. I thought it was a little weird that for you know such a large purchase, they passed on the transaction fees to me instead of just eating that maybe small 1%, but at the end of the day, I guess what's $50 or so. Uh, the bike took two weeks for them to assemble, and then it shipped out from Canada, which took another week. It came from a sh uh, freight shipping company in a giant crate, and the freight company called me a few days before they delivered it to make sure that I'd be home and schedule a time for it to be dropped off in my garage. Um, you can see the bikes in the crate here, and you need a square drive uh, screwdriver to undo the crate, so if you don't have one on hand, uh, you'll definitely want that when the bike shows up. Now to keep things moving, I've been talking over uh, some of these shots, but as you can see, there's a battery on the left-hand side, 17 amp hour, and on the right-hand side, there is a 2 to 3 kilowatt electric motor. You sit in the center in this kind of uh, adapted kite harness thing, and you feel pretty secure when you're strapped in. Now my bowhead reach came with a roll bar which must be a new feature at this time because nobody warned me that it would be coming with one and it's not shown anywhere on the website or in any photos. I can see why they included it for safety and maybe it helps you kind of push around the bike when it's on the ground, but I still think it probably should have warned me that there was going to be a fairly big change from what's shown on the website. I'm also not a huge fan of the fact that it's painted gray instead of black to match the rest of the bike. It does look like it has these posts that mount it, and if you wanted to just fully get rid of it, I think it wouldn't be that hard to do. The battery mounts to the left side. There's this little lever that you have to push while simultaneously lifting on the battery. It'd be a little easier for me if I didn't have to push them simultaneously and I could just unlatch it and then pull it up with one hand, but it's not that big of a deal, I guess. The battery is a custom stack up of cells inside of a 3D printed bracket inside of the Pelican case. The motor controller is in a smaller box on the right hand side. I was kind of surprised to see this little LCD screen. I guess they're using some sort of off the shelf controller. I'm also a little surprised that there isn't any airflow to the controller. It's just inside of this uh, Pelican case and I wonder if it could get too hot and overheat in here. On the left and right hand side of the handlebars there's brake levers for the front and rear brakes. The left hand side has this M and up and down button that let you select different speed ranges and on the right hand side there's a twist throttle that shows you the battery voltage as well. There's also a keyed switch to turn it on and off. There is no reverse, so if you want to go in reverse you just kind of have to grab the front wheels and pull backwards like some sort of wheelchair. I really think a reverse would be a great addition to this. Bowhead sells a $400 cushion accessory you can buy with your reach. Although I'm just using a $20 Amazon cushion and it seems to be working fine. I'm not a wheelchair user though, so my cushion isn't that important to me. This brings us to the review part. I'll talk about what I really like about this and then some of the ways that I think it could be improved. The people who created the Bowhead Reach talk about how it's a tool to access places you otherwise wouldn't be able to go, and I'm certainly already experiencing that. Even if I never go down a mountain, just riding on a rail trail, down the neighborhood streets, or around parks would be a really great experience, and I'm looking forward to getting to that. It rides well, it's very sturdy and well made, so you have a lot of confidence in it. 
the parts fit together tightly, and somebody's put a lot of thought into machining out all the extra weight in here. There really is a lot of very beautiful CNC machine work here. So now we'll talk about some of the things that I've found that I'm not such a big fan of. Now to be fair, Bowhead is building something that nobody else is even trying to build right now, and they're certainly not building a whole lot of them. Some of these things though are pretty minor, and things that could be easily fixed. Buying one of these requires spending an amount of money that would buy a used car. We're talking $18,000 here, so you have pretty high expectations when it arrives. I'm also going to have to use my mechanical engineer voice a couple times when I talk about some of these things. The biggest problem I'm having is with the articulating front suspension. This is the cool feature about a bowhead that lets you bank into a turn or lean uphill on a slope. However, there's nothing that really dampens or gives it any sort of spring force. When you receive the bike, there's this pin in the front suspension that locks out the front articulation. When you remove it, you can push the bike side to side. Or like when you're riding, you would swivel your hips and push the steering left or right to lean the bike. However, like I said, there's no spring force or dampener or anything that really keeps you upright, so if you just lean a little bit over and let go of the handlebars, you would just fall over. Here you can see I've pulled out the pin and I'm just going to push over the bike a little bit and it's just going to tip over. Now Bowhead says that as you ride it, you get used to this and can control it better. I also think that it may depend on your biomechanics. If you have a lot of upper body strength, it may be no problem to wrestle the bike left or right as it wants to tilt over. However, for me, I find that once I start to go over a little bit, I just tip over. I think Bowhead could improve this by adding some sort of limit to how far the articulation goes so that you could adjust it and over time maybe give yourself more freedom. There's no stop to the articulation range of motion. It just keeps going until the steering tie rods hit the frame or adding some sort of spring that helped you stay upright. I mean, when you have the weight of the motor and the battery all tilting over with you, it's a lot of weight that you have to support. So far, I've just kept the pin in for my rides, and on a normal road or the gravel paths, I think it's pretty fine, and maybe I'll be able to make some changes to improve this. Another problem I'm having is getting in and out of the bowhead is not trivial. The biggest issue I have is when you kind of have your feet on the one side, you have to somehow get like your right leg up over the handlebars, across, and back into the other leg rest. Bowhead itself, I think, even knows this is a problem because in their demonstration video of how to get into the bowhead, they cut out the part of the video that shows Cole here trying to get his leg over to the other side. If they made the handlebars removable so that you didn't have to clear such a big height with your other leg, that would help a lot. As I said earlier, I chose the rotating seat option. It does help me get in and out of the bike. However, the rotating seat hits the pins on the roll bar and the suspension gas shock strut thing here. I could push the seat farther forward, but I'm 6'2", and I'm already very far forward on the bike, and so I really want to keep the weight back on the wheel as much as possible. Another quality of life improvement would be some sort of parking brake. I'm just using this bungee cord to hold the bike still while I get in and out of it, or if I'm on a hill and just want to take a break. The mechanical design of the bike is excellent, but some of the wiring and electronics is a little amateurish. The wire that goes to the up and down buttons just has this flimsy splice with some shrink tube over it. I don't know why they couldn't just put the right connector on it so that it would connect into their wiring harness. The motor controller is also kind of a rat's nest. There's a lot of extra wires and connectors in here. And there's just RC car connectors or hobbyist grade connectors for the battery. The bowhead uses some 3D printed materials, and I don't have a problem when they're used to just seal out the battery wires here, but the entire battery latching mechanism is a 3D printed assembly. On a production piece of equipment, I don't think it's really appropriate to be using 3D printed parts here. The seat is also just a black painted piece of plywood instead of something a little more sophisticated and engineering worthy of an $18,000 bike. Another place where the vehicle dynamics could be better is in the front steering. 
In steering geometry, we look for Ackermann. This is when the inside wheel of a vehicle turns tighter than the outside wheel because they're tracing two different circles, if you think about it. There's some other YouTube videos that explain it, but anyways, I think this makes the bowhead not steer particularly well when you put in a lot of extreme steering angle. And it would be a fairly easy fix to actually make the steering follow Ackerman principles. One of the easy things to fix would be the manual. There is no printed manual included with the bike, I was just sent a PDF, and the manual leaves out a lot. I'm finding things missing like the roll hoop, the rotating seat mechanism, what the up and down buttons do, and this pin that locks out the articulation. These are pretty fundamental things to the operation of the bike. When I asked support, they said a couple of these things are in the hanging tags, but other things they admitted are missing. It doesn't seem that it would be that hard to update the manual. The manual is a lot of pages that look like it was written by a lawyer, telling you things like, don't go off jumps, even though that's like every social media post they have. Maybe if they took a week off and just focused on updating the manual, they could really give you a much better document. At the end of the day, none of these issues are really deal breakers, and I'm still happy to have this tool in my toolbox. I definitely recommend trying to test ride one before you buy if you can, especially if you're not a paraplegic with a lot of upper body strength, whom it really seems like the bike was designed for. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you out on the trails.